poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. Welcome, 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 my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, the founder of CPG, Coach Brad Wilson. I am joined by John for Tactical Tuesday. John, how you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. How are you? I can't complain at all. I can't complain at all. In the past week, we've had uh, some exciting news. The merch store is finally live at cpgmerch.com. We ran a village-wide competition uh, for folks to submit um, illustrations and graphics that we can turn into hoodies and t-shirts and hats. And yeah, it, it was uh, touch and go for a little bit when you know Coach Shu was the only person that submitted a graphic and um, it was... <laughs> 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 How do we say uh, subpar? Um, <laughs> subpar. He, he basically forced my hand, and I had to hire my graphic designer to make a bunch of um, different uh, merch options. So just so that Shu could not win. There, there's just not a world he's where. He's good at poker, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, graphics not exactly his uh, specialty, but everything turned out really well and super pumped and um yeah so check out cbgmerch.com we have tactical tuesday t-shirts uh and hats I th- i've ordered i think four of them myself um they should be here any day now nice. so for, for those of you watching on huh it's hoodies t-shirts and hats hoodies t-shirts and hats oh my we also have some mugs and mouse pads because uh Armijo, the villager who helped me put the store together, also put together mouse pads and coffee mugs. And um, yeah, I think we're going to be expanding our assortment of coffee mugs. I want a Tactical Tuesday mug to nice. start my day off the right way. We're going to take over Amazon soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, if you're in the village, by the way, for a limited time, have. Um, a free shipping code it's village shipping and also you can request different colors for the shirts and zippers if zipping your hoodie up is a thing that you would like to do uh we're we're taking requests for a limited time i can't imagine that we'll take requests forever but if you want to get in there cbgmerch.com hop in the slack community all that stuff if you um, spend ten thousand dollars or more on Tactical Tuesday merch, we'll review one of your hands on, <laughs> on Tactical Tuesday. Wow, you know we we didn't discuss this beforehand. I don't know that I'm comfortable with with that deal. No, um, just just buy five thousand t-shirts and <laughs> and we'll do it. <laughs> five thousand t-shirts. So for those who are listening right now, the t-shirts are not two dollars a piece, as John <laughs> John is just. <laughs> I don't know if, if he did the quick math in his head, but that, that is not the case. They are not $2 a piece. We would um, be losing quite a bit of money if such a thing happened. And I, I guess we, you would own us if that were the case. You would <laughs> you'd order us to review whatever the hell you wanted us to review, <laughs> I guess. Um, but that out of the way, let's uh, look at some of these hands. What stakes are these give me the the rundown First What's one's a theme? A i don't i don't even know the theme i haven't seen these hands this week either um i guess the theme is two hands where i get ripped on or jammed on and uh yeah didn't feel great about either to be honest <laughs> one i had so, not a yeah. I, one i had like <laughs> this hand i had six high when i got jammed on and the second one i had a really good hand and still didn't feel great about it so hmm. okay well, I can't imagine, you know, you, you getting jammed on with six high. I mean, what what could there be to talk about? Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> uh, so 
So this starts out, we're playing 500 and L. I'm on the button with six to five of hearts. I make it $15. The small blind looks like a reg, three bets to 60. I call this $60. Flop is eight, seven, three rainbow with one heart. So I flop open ender with a backdoor flush draw and the small blind checks. Um, don't know if I can really start gleaning anything from this like check. Uh, don't really know what this guy's three bet out of position strategy is, whether he's playing like a big bet check strategy, whether he generally bets range. And this might mean that like his, his checking range is really, really weak. Um, but my sort of general plan when I have air and face, uh, face a check from the preflop three better is just to uh, stab small on the flop. Um, this hand feels, you know, I feel really comfortable doing that since I can, uh, you know, call a, uh, excuse me, call a check raise or jam over a check raise or something like that. So um, not a lot to be worried about. I think when I do actually have the open ender, maybe there's more to worry about when I have the open ender and less to worry about when I have like the, you know, queen nine of clubs or whatever in this spot. But. Yeah. I mean, well, what you mean by that is a little bit more of your equity to be denied. Although, like you said, I don't think your equity is getting denied it. Yeah. when you start off by betting just because you can bet rip the flop yeah. um, versus check raise. I do think that you could check this board as well. I think you could bet or check. Mm -hmm. Check seems probably pretty reasonable to me. Um, but either way, like it, with, with your exact hand, it's kind of just hard to go wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think are the benefits to checking? Like instead of just doing your, doing our best to get, you know, over cards and stuff to fold ASAP? I mean, we can realize equity and get a bunch of value from villains, bluffs, and their weaker portion of range. We can turn a pair. Um, yeah, we, we just get to realize a lot of equity and realize future data points. If villain checks twice, then I'm feeling way more confident in uh, stabbing versus two checks than one check. I think you're, you are going to get check raise here a fair amount from a reg whenever you do stab. So it's something that you do have to keep in the back of your mind. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I would not be, not be shocked at all to get check raised uh, after stabbing the swap. So, and you, go you, ahead. You, oh, sorry. you don't have a ton of like really great hands. You know, you you've got the sets and two pair, but that's really, that's really it. Yeah. Then you have a lot of like unpaired type hands that could easily just stab this board. So yeah, yeah. which I would definitely do with all those unpaired hands. I can't call a check raise or or whatever. So mm -hmm. I do stab. Um, I think a third. So there's 125 in the pot. I bet $40 and 60 cents and the small blind calls mm -hmm. turn is the queen of hearts. So I turn a flush draw to go along with my open ender um, thoughts on the small blinds check call range. Once he does not check raise and he just decides to call with 30%. Uh, um, something bluff catchery, you know, yeah. Ace think, king, ace queen. I think like the, like the first question I have is like, is this like check call range, well protected? Like, does he have aces in this? I would think so. You, you think so? Okay. Well, I mean, I, I think that once you bet small in the flop and they have the option of check raising with a lot of their lower equity hands with back doors, they're probably going to be check raising a bunch, with those type of hands. So when they check call, it just makes me think that, you know. They're probably going to have over pairs. They're probably going to have ace king. They're probably going to have ace queen. You know, they could have a hand like, you know, some kind of pair, ace eight, ace seven, ace tray, something like that. Um, yeah, I think yeah. those hands make sense. I think people, the one part of that that I disagree with is that I, th I don't think regs even, or the regs that I play with are great about not check raising their over pairs facing this. Uh, tiny bet on the flop. I, I would be pretty surprised to see over pairs. Honestly, like I think, I just don't think people are good enough about like protecting their check call range with like hands like aces in the spot enough. Um, I just don't get. Uh, I, I I guess like another way to put it is like I feel like I get this like flop bet in and then get like another turn bet in and like I just fold out like so much of their range. Um, it, it's it's definitely possible that. You know, villains can't help themselves but check raise with their over pairs on the flop and aren't really disciplined enough to check call. But I, I think they absolutely should check call with their over pairs here um, quite often. Yeah. Uh, 
This queen on the turn, I think, is an interesting card, though, uh, besides the fact that it gives you a flush draw. So the, the board right now is tray of clubs, seven of hearts, eight of diamonds, queen of hearts. So you have six high with a flush draw. The small blind checks. Tell me your thoughts here. Um, so my plan was to, like, I, I do think the queen of hearts is kind of interesting. My plan was just to keep um, basically stab small in the splop, stab small in the turn, and jam the river. Um, so I was planning on just going ahead and, and doing that with this hand. I don't know how much like turning the flush draw actually makes a difference. I don't think it makes a huge difference because I'm planning on calling it off if I do get jammed on on the turn, thinking that I'm just getting probably a good enough price. I think the queen um, in with respect to how it interacts with the small blinds range, I think the queen definitely improves like a hand like ace queen that is going to um, almost for sure float the flop or, or not float, but call the call the one third size flop float. Um, I do think that he can now have like turn flush draws that also do the same thing. I had like ace king of hearts or maybe even like king jack of hearts or ace jack of hearts. Um, calling that small flop size would not be shocking either. Although some of the time, maybe those hands, <clears throat> some of those, some of those hands check raise. So um, yeah, kind of an interesting card for a lot of reasons. Yeah. I think one thing that you didn't mention here that's somewhat interesting is it does connect with your flop stabs. So king, queen, queen, jack, queen, 10, Yeah, those hands. Yeah. I think that like, I don't, what would you do with king, queen, I guess? Uh, king, queen of clubs. When you stab the flop, turns a queen, villain checks. Likely check back. Yeah, that would be my thought too. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would also like check back hands like nines, tens, jacks, you know, eight X that might also stab the flop small. Right, so like, by you know betting the turn like once again you're, you're repping like sevens eights trays and seven eight suited maybe aces uh if you flat that pre-flop as well yeah. um so i'd say like your your value range is still somewhat narrow here when you bet the turn yeah. which again is like mm. just something to bear in mind yeah, that absolutely. it's much much more difficult to generate folds when your value range is so narrow right. and villain has a decent amount of bluff catchers or they probably have a decent amount of bluff catchers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. They're like once the overcard peels, I suddenly the hands that I'm betting on the turn shrink massively. Or the hands that I'm betting on the turn for value shrink massively. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, that's something that I was not thinking about. So I think like, you know, as an alternative, I think you could check behind the turn and jam the river. Yeah. Um, I think that it would be a reasonable, um, reasonable way to play the hand as well, depending on, on the river. But I think you are right that, um, you are right that, uh, you probably have enough equity to call all in after you bet the turn. Yeah. And it sort of depends. I mean, like this is. So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that was worth talking about before this point, but this is really the point that this is really the point of the hand that I, I was most interested in. Um, uh, so it really depends on like what type of range I'm assigning the small blind. Because here I'm getting like just under two to one um, facing the turn check jam. I think like like the worst case scenario is him having like ace king of hearts or ace jack of hearts, right? I mean I think that you've you've really created a disaster for yourself, right? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> got, a, got, a, got a quick spoiler. It was an accident. It was an accident. Um, you, you've created a a negative situation because, like, yeah, you're getting close to two to one, right? And, and you need to have like two to one, and, and know that you have two to one versus villain's range. Okay. Like, I think you probably do, but man. Like, you could just bet bigger on the turn, and then you just always call, right? Yeah. I guess what, like, what I'm worried about is that, like, when I bet bigger on the turn, the river jam doesn't get through as often. That, that kind of thing. I mean, maybe, but you don't get yourself in this situation. Yeah. Like, where, like, so, so for the podcast listener... John bet a third on the turn, so 67, villain jammed, uh, and has John covered by a country mile. And uh, John's got 332 behind. 
Um, so calling 332, uh, getting 1.82 to 1 on his money, according to this uh, little odds thingy majig. So 1.82 to 1 under money. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, you, you just call all in, but. Yeah, if you don't love it. Don't love it. And yeah. again, I, I think you could check behind the turn and then jam over a riverbed as well. I think it's a reasonable line. Basically, like, I, I do think on this board that's so dynamic um, and draw heavy that, like, villains, bluff catchers will check raise all in here on the turn a, a fair amount just because you've got a lot of, like, jack tens, nine tens, backdoor hearts, all of those type of hands that they don't want to let play perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think why this spot is like particularly interesting with my end is like most of the time when I get in the spot and I bet the size, like it's with no equity hands that don't really care about getting check jammed on because I'm not, you know, I don't have a tough decision at all. But like this hand, like just has so much equity that I think it just shifts like the type of strategy that or the type of way I should be thinking about this this spot. Yeah, yeah. you can't have a hand that has too much equity. Right, right. Bet. Like, like it, if I had like jack nine of clubs, it'd just be like whatever. But like six five of hearts suddenly is. <laughs> is a big deal right 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 uh, um so ultimately we already spoiled the result for the youtube listener but now we can talk about uh you calling all in here i'm assuming that you just stuck with your plan of like betting and then yeah well i've probably got the right price and call yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. tough to see tough to see you fold a combo draw uh at any point in any hand and any reality in the multiverse yeah i think I, like my reaction was pretty much exactly how you described like what it feels like i was just like well this sucks call <laughs> <laughs> um i was also pretty impressed to get check jammed on in the spot because i think that's like something that like i said on the flop like i just really wasn't expecting their check call range to be you know protected enough to like have these sorts of check jams on the turn i am so used to getting this double barrel through um or the bet bet jam through that like yeah i was kind of both impressed and surprised to get check jam down here nice how'd it work out for the villain bad <laughs> not too great huh what you can't see um, is that we actually ran it twice and i hit the nine on the first run and i hit a six on the second one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy um so villain shows up with the ace of hearts king of diamonds so check ripped with ace king high um, one of the bluff catchers that we mentioned on the flop was Ace King High. Yep. Um, <clears throat> pretty interesting rip by villain. Yeah, really interesting. This is. I don't think it's great that they have the Ace of Hearts. Yeah, and he's just or, or the King of Diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, while while we're there, the Ace of Hearts or the King of Diamonds, but. Well. Nothing. I Nothing really. to say about the rip. I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah, I was, again, like I said, like I was like, I was like, man, these guys actually have like bluffs like in these spots. And actually, I don't, although I don't know if that's what this is, but. I don't know what it is. I mean, basically it's like they're going to realize some fold equity. They're going to get it in with the best hand at some frequency. Yeah. Um, and they always realize their equity so yeah yeah i can't really fault them if they think if they especially if they think that you're not betting a queen on the turn and you're just over stabbing flop and turn right, right. then it's like it, it makes sense that they would jam with ace king just because like i said before you're, you're wrapping such a narrow yeah. value range here i think that's the most important takeaway for me in this hand is like the fact that i wasn't thinking about like what my value range actually is on the turn and just like you know stabbing it sort of blindly and thinking like yeah. oh, that's just my strat but like on the queen i should be thinking a little bit harder about um thinking a little bit harder about like what my value range wants to do and probably finding the turn check back well you know next time next time you can check back the turn with your combo draw we'll we'll see yeah. if uh <laughs> if river nine and win the money the right way <laughs> <laughs> there you go exactly river the nine win the money the right way um this was a uh, one of our longer first hands in in Tactical Tuesday in recent memory. So now we're gonna cut to the break and.
break down another hand where John gets it ripped in his face. And a much and, bigger pot. <laughs> yeah, and probably feels like death. That, that's, that's how it seems to go. Yes, yes, that is the theme. Are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack? The CPG Wolf Program is a close-knit brotherhood, hell-bent on one thing only, chasing poker greatness. Powered by bleeding-edge wolf strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG Wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com. All right, welcome back to the grand finale hand of this tactical Tuesday episode where John gets ripped on. Um, John, you want to jump straight away into the action? Yep. So this hand happens at 510, um, folds around to the small blind who is a reg. He opens to 50, or sorry, $30, three big blinds. Um, I defend the king nine of spades. I think this hand could be three bet, could be called. Yeah, Not could be three bet, could be called. Yeah. You're now playing 1K no limit for yeah. the podcast listener. Uh, villain has about 125 big blinds. You have villain covered. 874 rainbow with one spade on the flop. The small blind checks. Um, wouldn't be shocked to see the small blind checking range on this texture out of position. Um, I I check back, but I do think that this might be the first spot to talk about. But like I do think that this hand could be bet. And I don't know if you think it just straight up just should be. I should just start stabbing the flop with this hand. It's just has so much potential. I mean, I think that it, it should probably be bet. You know, I think you, you have five, six off most likely in your defense range here, seven, eight off um, all the pocket pairs. You've got a bunch of straight draws. So like you've got more than enough hands to uh, merit stabbing with this hand with uh, mm -hmm. backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw over cards i mean so much potential this, yeah. this hand is just um you know it's ripe with with potential here uh and for again for the podcast listener i don't, don't know if i said it but the flop is four seven eight the four of spades seven of hearts eight of diamonds jack has the uh, jack john has the king at nine of spades um so yeah i i think it could definitely be bet here on the flop and there are a lot of different turn cards where i think we can justify barreling um a lot more i really like having a nine so you block nine ten so you know on a jack on a six those type of cards we we just get to like fire away yeah also um, makes it less likely that you that we get check raised i think when we have a nine because i think a hand like nine ten is going to check raise quite frequently maybe even like jack nine definitely a hand like nine six is going to be check raising so yeah just a hand that like allows us to see turns and rivers more often. Yeah, agreed. Um, but with that said, you do opt to check behind. Don't do you flip a flip a coin? Just no, not feeling, I think not feeling the bet here. I just yeah, I guess like this hand just in general was like super passive from top to bottom. I didn't three bet pre flop, didn't bet the flop. Yeah, yeah, passive. rolled low. I rolled low. Pa <laughs> passive JC um, at the helm. So you check back. The turn is the eight of spades, giving you flush draw with overcards and pairing the eight. What does villain do here? Villain bets about uh, two thirds. Two thirds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't think there's much to talk about here. Just going to be calling probably my entire continuing range. Okay. I mean, I think that there is like room for some sort of raises here. Like, I, I do think you check back some 8x eight, eight on the flop. Yeah, for sure. A fair amount that, you know, you, you could raise with. So, like, this hand would be quite a natural um, bluff that's in your range after checking back with 8x. So, 
I think raising is on the table. It's not like yeah. absurd <clears throat> to to raise here. Um, I also find it a little odd that villain bets uh, two thirds here when the eight pairs, and just in that. Um, yeah, I mean, basically they're saying that they're checking range on the flop, right? Yeah. That somehow the, this eight improves them, um, which, yeah, it is a little interesting. I don't know how often villains will check, like, ace eight, king eight, uh, nine eight, maybe more inclined to check, like, six eight or five eight, hands that have, like, a gut shot to go along with it, but... Oh, I mean, this guy is out of position on, like, a pretty, you know, on a board that's, like... At, at the worst, like neutral for the big blind, you know, maybe even, you know, maybe I even have like a slight equity advantage on this board um, in a single race pot. So like, I, I definitely think all those like weak eight, weak eight, eight X's could be checking. And yeah, I think even, I wouldn't be shocked to see even like all of his eight X just check the flop. Um, yeah. I mean, they could also be bet like value betting some kind of overpair to jacks, queens, yep. aces, I think would make sense on the eight pairing too. So yeah. maybe they do have enough um value here mm -hmm. um so in the sticking with the theme of playing passively don't raise you the call yeah. yeah well good thing because somehow you've arrived at the river with the second nut flush the river is a deuce of spades final board is eight eight seven four deuce with the eight four deuce of spades john has a king nine of spades um somehow all the money is going to go in here or that's the theme of this episode. So let's see how that goes down. I'm sure you can imagine how the money's going to go in and why I don't feel great about it. <laughs> I mean, they're probably going to bet three bet, right? Is that? Oh, let's, let's find out. Yeah. So they start with betting 105 into 144. They've got about 1,100 behind. John finally comes out of his passive trance, decides that the second nut flush is worthy of raising the river with i don't love this size you I raised mean, to 230 229 so very tiny not really sure what i'm targeting at this point for calls i mean like obviously he has flushes too which is probably which is like one of the reasons i don't like the size like i think i could be going bigger if, if i do think he has like tons of flushes in range which you know i think is totally reasonable to just check the flop bet the turn and you know value bet the river with every single mm -hmm. flush um I'm guessing like what I was thinking in game was that I'm targeting like a, um, a even like a weaker range than that. Like one that includes like over pairs, um, maybe even like as, as like maybe even like strong seven X. I, I don't know if like that, a hand like that would bet this size on the river and, and maybe find a call. But basically like I, I wanted to get called by hands that were worse than flushes. And I don't know if that's the right, the right way to think about um, river sizing here. What do you raise with if you have deuces? So you river a full house. Like, mm. what do you raise to? Honestly, like, I might raise to, like, a similar size to this, like, thinking the same thing. Like, Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Um, I think it is probably good that you raise to the same size, whether you have deuces full or the... Right. King high flush. I think like one thing that I know about myself or like am discovering about myself is that I tend to raise on the smaller side with value on the river. Um, on that, and that last tactical Tuesday that we did where you jammed with aces, um, it was the second hand of last tactical Tuesday where like the flush completed on the turn. The guy did like a small one third induction or thin value bet on the river and you found the jam. And I said like, wow, like if I did find a raise, I think it would be to like a smaller size. Like I would have you know, just raise like $200 over the 70 instead of, you know, putting all 500 in. And yeah, I don't know if that's like, I don't know if I'm making, I mean, like in that case, like I would have, I would have made less than you did in that hand. Cause the guy just called off his whole stack and I, I didn't expect him to do that with just the King. And I'm just wondering if like, I'm making those kinds of mistakes in other spots too, where I'm just like not picking the, picking a good raise size on the river with my value. I mean, this one's a little bit scary in that, while villain can check range on the flop, we're probably not checking range on the flop. Right. And two pair is probably not a hand that we're checking on the flop. And yeah. sets are probably not hands that we're checking on the flop. Yeah. So reopening the action here is sort of saying, okay, I'm going to put my face out here yeah. 
in the world and please just don't knock the bejesus out of me um and or you just kind of have to like all my stuff you're like i'm putting my face out here and if i get the bejesus knocked out of me like i'm 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 getting knocked out you know <laughs> like i'm not i'm not pulling my face back like yeah when i see the train coming or whatever <laughs> yeah keep your it. head on the squarely on the tracks <laughs> yeah. um while the train is is coming uh so from that lens right of you know if you see the train and you recognize that you don't have boats here. You rarely have boats. I think deuces full would be your only boat. Yep. So three combos of that. Um, yeah, it could be quite precarious reopening the action. So, you know, I, I also think that you probably don't have a ton of um, nut flushes either. Because I threw that because with you three bet them. pre with a lot of your suited <clears throat> ace yep. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, so you don't have a ton of nut flushes. You're yep. really at. Th this is like one of the better hands that you have, like in your whole range here, besides yep. deuces full. Yep. Um, All the things I said to myself facing the bet three bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think this is like a. It's an interesting lesson, right? Of like, should you even raise the river? I guess we can start there. Like, sh should you even open the action here on the river when villain can have all the boats and this is really the best hand that you have and facing a jam makes you feel like trash? Sounds like the answer is no. I mean, I guess I sort of waited the question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I led, led the witness here, but... Uh, I mean, it's worthy of discussion, right? Where, like, strong players can, like, it's just, even, not even strong players, but, like, when they have a boat, right? It's like, oh, Easy. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's I quite mean, perfect. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the fence, honestly. I'm probably leaning towards not raising the river here. Yeah. Just, actually, just because. talked about it. Yeah, it's funny that I came in thinking, like, ah, maybe I should raise bigger to, like, a different size. And the conclusion is, like, no, you shouldn't have raised that all. Yeah. I mean, again, like, like, like we just said, you know, when you lack the, the top end hands and villain has them, or we assume they do, but if they check range on the flop, then like probably shouldn't open the action. Um, wonder if there's like, if we can go a step further, like knowing everything that we said and like use the size, use a small raise size to induce. Like we know that we don't have the top end of our range. He knows that we don't we don't have the top end of our range. So like let's try to get him to you know, be really, really aggro over if there if there's one thing that I've learned about humans, it's that I mean it, careful what you wish for. Right? Because like you legitimately do not know what they know. Um and so like they could just almost never bluff and rip and you're just calling all in thinking that you're inducing and you just always lose. Right. It, it takes a special kind of person to bet, bet three, bet the river here with their bluffs, not saying that they don't exist. I, I think we're, you know, you and I are probably two people <laughs> who <are laughs> yeah. definitely bet three, bet rip the river. Although historically by bet three, bet rips on the river, when I feel like I can fold out their entire range, go not so well. Mm. Um, which has dissuaded or discouraged me from bet three betting on the river in these types of situations. So I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot, lot of, um, a lot of legs in this parlay that you need to hit to be able to just like raise small and then call all in confidently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I think my final answer here would just be to not open the action and yeah. call the river. Yeah. I think I think what that hinges on, honestly, mostly is is our assumption that the small blind the villain and the small blind is checking range on the flop, and like that allows him to have all the boats still. Um, I think that's like a big, big, big part of uh, why we don't want to reopen the action here. Right. Um, so, I guess let's go to the video and see how this goes down. So, you, villain bets one hundred five. You raise to two twenty nine with the second nut flush. Villain rips it in your face. Oh, one quick thing before 
uh, yeah. before the next thing. So I, I, I raised, and like before I could, <laughs> before I could even like process that I put the money in this guy jam, it was like I, I don't even know how he how he jammed that fast. Like it, like I, I was like, is this like a bot or something? Like how did the money go in in like less than like a millisecond? Where you like you don't, how, you, how, you probably didn't even see like the size that I raised to honestly. Yeah, seems like villain is a strong player. <laughs> I mean that that's what I would gather from this hand like especially you know because like basically if they're checking range on the flop what it means is they recognize that the equity distribution um is such that they need to be checking range here it's like neutral at best right right and and they're out of position which swings it to most likely just checking range right um and then when they snap jam the river it makes me think like they also recognize that you've probably fucked up here by opening the action They've yeah. got the boats and you don't, so yeah. it's just like I'm gonna bet three bet and make you fold your whole range. <laughs> I don't know, about, <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, again, this is that's this quite the projection there. Um, oh, that's what he's saying. That's, but that's, yeah, yeah. yeah, or or he that's, just has a boat, you know, whatever. Sure. Um, so basically, you've made your bed, so now I guess you get to sleep in it, right? Yeah. I mean, I pretty much had the conversation that we had about, like, you know, just, just being a really good hand. Although, like, in this spot, like, I think, like, all flushes are kind of the same. I don't know what you think. I think deuce is full is the same. I yeah. don't think villain's ever jamming with the nut flush. Oh, you don't think the villain ever jams the nut flush here? I don't think so. Why? If I, if I never have a boat, then, like... I mean, yeah, I just don't think they do. Like, you still have to get called, right? Yeah. I mean, but if I never have a boat and you have nut flush, like, what's? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do think that like having the king high flush here isn't like, oh wow, like because I have the second nut flush, like you know, this is why it's one of the best hands. I think having like a five high flush is honestly the same thing as having a king high flush here. I think like all his bluffs are gonna be, you know, maybe like boat blockers or maybe like ace with spade blocker type hands. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so I. I, like, I don't know. Hard, I don't know hard how to for them to have a boat blocker. Uh, I mean, I guess they got to be turning an eight into a bluff. Yeah. Or they like. I don't know. They've got to be turning an eight into a bluff. Yeah. Basically. Would they ever do something crazy with like seven four of diamonds? Like maybe that hand doesn't even bet the turn or the river. So. I don't think that hand bets the turn. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it would have to be an eight, just trying to fold out my entire range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which. I mean. I guess I don't know. (laughs) Maybe this, maybe this unicorn exists out in the world, and we'll see him here. But um, let's check the result, and oh, that's a hand that that's a hand that makes sense, and they can't even see it on YouTube because of these uh, technical. Uh, There we go. I'll pull it down. So villain does have the ace of spades and they have two aces. Um well played by them. Yeah, he definitely had a plan and is probably a pretty pretty good player. Yeah. You're scooping this twenty five hundred dollar pot and yet I can't help but feel like they fucked you up. Yeah, like I feel like the fish. Yeah. I, that's yeah. exactly how I felt. And I was like, man, <laughs> like, I almost kind of just wish he had a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely feels like they Yeah, like know. I'm the dude who just like raised because my hand felt too good and then just like couldn't fold a king eye flush because my hand just felt too good. And right, you know, right. Like, yeah, you're that guy. Yeah, that yeah. Guy. <laughs> All he has is this hand history to show people. Like, look, this is why you don't bet three bet the river. Yeah. By the way, this is why you don't bet three bet the river here. Nobody ever holds flushes. Like. <laughs> yeah. I've tried so many times, and it just never works out. Um, so I guess that's it. Good episode of Tactical Tuesday. You got owned in the second hand and somehow managed to win. So. I kind of owned in the first hand too. Ace King just like finding a turn check jam that <laughs> where he's actually slightly ahead. Like, yeah, this is uh, uh yeah. it's been a while since we've had one of these episodes. I think I feel, I feel like our early tactical Tuesdays were like all just me getting owned. <laughs> yes. Um, 
which is nice. You're, you're progressing, right? I know we've at least done one Tactical Tuesday episode where we talk about like having a plan for what to do after you raise on the river. So I assume that that sunk in, that you, you called the river fairly quickly without too much internal sadness. No, well, there's a lot of internal sadness, but I called quickly anyways. <laughs> <laughs> You process all that eternal. Oh that my in, God, I'm such a sentence. fish, but I can't pull the flush. So I guess it's just <laughs> going in. <laughs> there you go. And now we finally have um, the thought process on the other end of the fish. When we bet three bet the river and they call with a flush. Yeah. That's that's what it sounds like. <laughs> um, good stuff. Good stuff. That's all I have for today's episode of Tactical Tuesday. CPGmerch.com if you're so inclined. See you next week. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community. Book a coaching session or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.